YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back with a way, way too early 2021 NFL mock draft just after the 2020 draft ended here. Uh, real important, the draft order here, I used Super Bowl odds, Vegas Super Bowl odds here. So I'm not predicting the season with this draft order. Every single year people get mad at me because they think I'm predicting the season, which is not the case. You're not here for season predictions. We'll get to those in the future near future all right we're here to take a look try to get an idea of the 2021 top nfl draft prospects and maybe it's a little preview for the college football season which players to look out for that's what we're here for that's what i'm here for so uh let's just have fun with this here uh please subscribe to both of our channels trying to reach 50k we're getting real close thanks to the support out there follow that twitter uh, we're gonna have draft grades fan voted draft grades for every single team you guys vote for a letter grade uh, that'll be a lot of fun so you're gonna want to follow that twitter for sure first eight picks again Vegas Super Bowl odds. That's how I determine the order. The Jags have the the worst chance to win the Super Bowl, so I put them at the first pick, not predicting anything here. Trevor Lawrence will be the first pick next year, uh, the quarterback from Clemson. Even though Joe Burrow outplayed him this year, had a great season, he would Trevor Lawrence would have been the first pick this year. You know, I'm not saying I would have taken Lawrence over Burrow. Uh, that would be a tough choice, but uh, that's how good of a quarterback he is, very accurate quarterback, the arm strength, you know, makes the hardest throws in football look easy for him. And you see the mobility, too. Uh, you know, even seeing him running people over, too, in the, even in the playoffs. So, I mean, this guy's got everything you're looking for in a quarterback, and he will be the first pick next year. So the Jags happen to be in this video the first pick. Uh, so Gardner Minshew loses his job right off the bat there. Uh, Penny Sewell from Oregon, the offensive tackle to the Redskins. Yeah, they may have find a re found a replacement in Sadiq Charles, but this is about the range Sewell would go. The Redskins very well could have taken him if he was in the draft class this year. Very powerful tackle, real quick feet as well. He will be a top tick pick, the tackle from Oregon here. Uh, so I have him going to the Redskins here. And then the Bengals. Get Jamar Chase for Joe Burrow, the best receiver in college football last year. Would have been the first receiver drafted in this historic class, wide receiver class. He's that good. Really the combination of everything, but uh, the quickness. You know, you don't you don't look at Jamar Chase and see the 4-3 speed or anything. He's fast, but he's not that fast. But when you watch him, he makes cornerbacks chase him with the quickness uh, of the routes. Uh, and it's 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 comical at times. And then the uh, using his length. Uh, to create the separation, you know, getting physical. We see him out physical. A.J. Terrell. A.J. Terrell was athletic enough to keep up with him, but Jamar Chase was just way better, you know, and way more physical. As a dominant receiver, will be a top pick. Would have been the top receiver in this class, for me at least. Uh, and the Dolphins take Alex Leatherwood, who some of us thought he could be in this draft class. We've seen him move from right guard. And from the past, he was at right guard and moved to left tackle. And it's like, you know, he, there was no transition for him. Still played at a high level. You know, with this pick, thinking with the Dolphins, you know, they, they drafted Robert Hunt, who can play a right tackle. I just prefer him at right guard, so and they took Austin Jackson for left tackle. So I'm thinking Leatherwood would play right tackle, you know, right tackle. Worst case scenario, plays guard. Uh, but that's a tackle, a top-tier offense lineman to look out for. Micah Parsons, absolute stud from Penn State. Uh, you know, almost on the level as Isaiah Simmons. You know, maybe not quite as good in coverage, but good in coverage. But he's an off-the-ball linebacker, outside linebacker that I think could play. You know, it's another one of those guys. You know, if you draft him and you play – uh, a 4-3, I can see him playing outside. If you draft him and play a 3-4, I could see him playing outside or inside. You know, He's real good at getting after the quarterback, very rangy, very athletic. Uh, you know, That bowl game for him against Memphis was unbelievable. He's been unbelievable the whole, every step of the way. So the Panthers kind of adding, even though they just drafted a ton of defense, You know, kind of adding him with Shaq Thompson there in the linebacker unit. Uh, Parsons should be a top pick. Hey, look, we got a guard this year that's top tier, unlike this year. Uh, Trey Smith from Tennessee goes to the Jets. They built the tackles up uh, this offseason, the Jets that is, and now they add that top-tier guard. Uh, really, if you want to call Smith a tackle, he would probably be a first-round pick as a tackle, but he is a dominant, dominant guard, bullies people. Had some health concerns in the past. It seems like that's cleared up. That's fantastic. Should be a top pick as a guard, but again, can't play tackle. Giants, Jalen Waddle from Alabama, the athletic receiver, do-it-all receiver, and a special teamer as well. You know, Maybe not quite the movement of Jerry Judy, but uh, really, you know, right there, kind of a mixture of the Henry Ruggs, Judy, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, kind of the Golden Tate replacement here is what I'm thinking. So Golden Tate not going to be long term, obviously. Giants got a pretty good receiver unit, but you want to keep it good. 
So Jalen Waddle will kind of be that new Golden Tate type uh, role for them. Uh, and the Lions actually go Justin Fields, the Ohio State quarterback, former Georgia quarterback, transfers, and uh, we had a huge year for Ohio State, and we expect more improvement. A really good combination of size and athleticism. You know, uh, this guy's pretty, you know, pretty freaky. You know, size with, yeah, his build with athleticism as well can move. You know, not. You know, right in the range of, I guess, Lawrence, you know, maybe even a little more athletic. Uh, Lawrence, a really, really smart runner. Uh, but in this case, you know, if the line, and again, this is Vegas, uh, Super Bowl odds is how I determine the order. Uh, before anybody yells at me, i got to keep mention at, mentioning that. If the Lions are picking around these parts, people are going to be fired. They're going to blow everything up. You know, Stafford also has the injury concern. They're going to blow everything up, so this could be the pick. Uh, here, Justin Fields to the Lions, so they're kind of the future quarterback there. And to me, the Lions don't have any giant needs on top of that. So even if they did blow it up, it wouldn't really be a full rebuild. Just kind of get the quarterback of the future and just kind of uh, the new new staff's kind of idea of things going forward. Uh, so that's kind of just the case if they were to pick uh, you know that early again. We all would know they would they would kind of get rid of that current staff. Uh, next eight picks, another quarterback, Tanner Morgan from Minnesota, had a big-time year uh, this year, and you can see the improvement every step of the way. Very accurate quarterback, very accurate quarterback this season. Just trying to figure out who can take that Joe Burrow uh, leap this year. You know, I'm not saying anybody's going to do it. That was ridiculous. But a guy like Tanner Morgan, who actually had a really, really good season last year uh, and, and continued to improve, you know, can improve even more. So that can kind of be that shocker guy. But kind of, once again, if the Raiders are picking down here at 9, uh, especially, yeah, I think they got a pretty complete team. They don't have any giant holes. But if they're picking down here again at 9, um, or up here, I should say, then, you know, it's going to be brought back up that what, what about Derek Carr? You know, they're going to improve the quarterback play. Gruden's going to pick his quarterback. And I know they have Gar Carr and Mariota, but it could be uh, time for a guy like Tanner Morgan if they're picking down here. Dolphins take Devonta Smith, so now they get two as receiver. Devonta Smith, a uh, very impressive season for him, an outside receiver and a very athletic one too and a pretty good length as well. Very good route runner, you know, gave uh, even – you know, LSU some struggles at times. You know, knows how to get open, knows how to contest, you know, make the contested catch on the sideline. Uh, so that is a top tier receiver. Another another good receiver class coming up. Gregory Rousseau uh, from Miami, the pass rusher. You know, the thing with these Miami guys, the, you know, every year when you're predicting the next year, you kind of expect these guys to be really good because they were good in the past, but they kind of just let you down. You know, I, I feel like we've went through a few of those guys the last few years. You know, some of them got have gotten drafted, but nowhere near what we thought based on their pre previous year play uh, but this guy was a stud last year you know really getting after the quarterback Cardinals I believe that based on what way they drafted and where their roster's heading they're going to switch to a 4-3 possibly uh, it really doesn't matter either way just as a pass rusher that can fill uh, in you know the starting depth in uh, opposite of Chandler Jones I should I should say Chargers uh, surprisingly kind of went through this draft without finding their left tackle for right now and the future uh, Liam Eichenberg from Notre Dame uh, would be a plug-and-play left tackle uh, in the left tackle spot. Brian Belaga going to play right tackle, but since they're so thin, could they actually put Belaga at left tackle this 2020 season? We'll see, but this will be a big area of need uh, as we sit, looking at the way, uh, you know, the, the future, I should say. Uh, Broncos had a pretty good draft. They filled some big needs, but they still could definitely use a corner at this point. And Patrick Sertain, a guy the second he stepped on the field at Alabama, uh, really caught my eye. Very impressive corner. Uh, real quick and playmaking ability. You see he's good at uh, really reading the quarterback and the receiver, not just too focused on the, just the receiver like most of these cornerbacks are at the college level. Uh, so the Bronx would love to have him. The Falcons take Travis Etienne. Uh, quite possibly could have been my number one running back in this 2020 class and surprising he went back. Uh, Todd Gurley's obviously not long term. Etienne, uh, really strong runner, but really good catch the ball in the backfield too. Uh, complete running back, so the Falcons could, that could be their future running back there. Paulson Adebo, another guy that very shocked he didn't come out, uh, but you see the long list of corners that were pretty good that went early in the 2020 draft. He would have been a, in the mix. Uh, for that, you know, another guy that the, the combination of physicality and I say quickness, you know, attacking the ball when it's in the air is pretty impressive. Uh, you know, I was kind of looking way too early last year, and I really liked the day for the Jags, actually. That's one I kind of pointed out, uh, and here we go. 
uh, for, for next year. Uh, the Browns take Jeremiah Owosu-Karamoa, uh, the linebacker from Notre Dame, another freaky linebacker, you know, a step off of uh, Micah Parsons, who we talked about, you know, a do-it-all outside linebacker, gets after the quarterback at a high level, but he's an off-the-ball linebacker and freaky range. You know, this guy's going to run fast, too, when we see him in the future here. Uh, so definitely another freaky linebacker for this next class. So the Browns kind of pair him with their group, kind of complete that group because they lost some guys over the last year. Uh, next eight picks, we got the Bears taking Sam Cosme, offense tackle from Texas. This could be, you know, the Mackay Becton of this class. You know, I'm not really going to compare their styles a whole bunch, but freaky size and, you know, maybe maybe Becton's 40-yard dash time, which doesn't really matter for tackles. going to be a little faster, but uh, the, the quickness here, they can compare with the, the size and the quickness, crazy quick feet, uh, and the Bears, I think, are set for tackles this year. Uh, but Leno could be on his way out after after this year, and then Massey has his injuries as well. Uh, so that they could be looking for a tackle next year. Uh, the Titans could be losing Corey Davis coming up. Humphreys is uh, you know not really a long term answer, I don't think. AJ Brown's fantastic. You know, get that outside receiver, Justin Ross from Clemson, big play. You know. T. Higgins was kind of the number one this year, but really not a, much of a difference between T. Higgins and Ross. So Ross is going to get those looks this year, and it could be big time for them. Steelers go quarterback in the future. Big Ben won't have too much time. Jamie Newman has got that big Ben uh, build and arm strength as well, and now he's going to Georgia. Wake Forest this year had a huge year, now going to Georgia. It's gonna be a, this is probably the player I'm looking forward to the most for so many reasons. Let's back up, though. Let's go when, you know, a couple years ago, 2018, when, he first, when we first got to see some glimpses of him at Wake Forest when he had to come in. Didn't look too good. Didn't look too good, so he wasn't really on my radar, honestly. You see, you like the, uh, you know, you kind of like the look of the guy, like the build, like the arm strength, but then he comes in, start gets wins the starting job, which nobody really thought he could, or some people did in 2019, and played absolutely lights out. Like the improvement was ridiculous, looked like a new guy. And then um, in the bowl game, actually, they played Michigan State, and he actually got knocked out of the game uh, with an injury, and that kind of cost them there. So you see the difference with and without a guy like Jamie Newman. It was very late in the game, though, so you can't really guarantee anything. But And now he's going to Georgia, and you know, a bigger school, better coaching. It's going to be exciting. You know, they may have to switch systems a little bit. It's going to be very exciting. And then Georgia going from a good quarterback like Jake Fromm but a totally different style uh, and another good quarterback in Jamie Newman. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this. Uh, just kind of feels like a Big Ben replacement for the future. Uh, Newman, you know, don't know what to expect though. You know, it could be, you know, going from Wake Forest to Georgia. Yeah, better coaching, better system, uh, but it really could be harder. You're going to play against SEC competition. Let's take care of the ball here, you know, because he still, here and there, he had those uh, pretty bad turnovers. Not an insane amount of them or anything that make it that concerning, but some of them would be pretty bad. So I, I just see him to keep improving. Uh, you know, you like the idea of the guy. Uh, the Vikings did a good job grabbing a tackle of the future in the draft. Uh, they grabbed a couple, you know, offense linemen that could be guards for them, but they didn't grab that top-tier guy. Uh, Creed Humphrey, who can play center, but I think will be a guard for them if they do, so they get the top-tier guy here from Oklahoma. The Colts grabbed Walker Little, who was a little higher on, you know, maybe his first year we saw him playing than now, uh, but still a very good tackle. Anthony Costanzo. May not have long, you know, maybe two more years here. He kind of hinted at retirement coming. Uh, Walker Little is a good replacement. That's almost a similar style tackle there. So that could be a good replacement. The Colts uh, will be in the market for, you know, looking for that replacement you know, in the near future. Bills take Xavier Thomas, a guy that, you know, we see the traits and we see the, and we get the idea of Xavier Thomas that will, will be really good, you know, a top recruit a couple years ago. Uh, but haven't really got that fully on the field yet. Uh, you know, and, and I think that's coming here. I think that's coming. So this is kind of just uh, going off the traits and the uh, upside of Xavier Thomas from Clemson, and the Bills uh, could use a top-tier pass rush for the future here. Packers, let's try it again. You know, maybe they take a receiver this time around. Rashad Bateman is the Packers type of receiver. I think that's the, I think that's the situation. Packers, have a, they're very picky with their receivers. They have a specific type of receiver that they look for. You know, a Devontae Adams type. That's really the, you know, the only one recently that's worked, even though they've had some really good receivers, maybe one of the better receiver units of all time when they actually won the Super Bowl, uh, you know, the most recent one. 
one. So, But this is would be a, a Devonta Adams type receiver here. Rashad Bateman, uh, spe spectacular catch artist, really good downfield, really good on the outside. You know, another Devonta Adams type receiver here. Uh, so the Packers, I think, would like to fit there, be willing to take a receiver this time around. Cowboys take Marvin Wilson, really good interior defense line from Florida State. You know, another one surprising, maybe he didn't come out this year. Not super surprising. Uh, but, yeah, kind of, they, they did good picking up Neville Gallimore in the draft, so the future could look like Wilson and Gallimore there in this way too early scenario. Uh, next group of the last group of picks here. Hey, we got a tight end this year that's worth the first round pick. Kyle Pitts is an absolute beast for Florida. Uh, very good athletic ability, big playability, solid blocker as well, freaky strength. Uh, there, you know, brushing off uh, tacklers, I should say. Seahawks got a lot of tight ends, but next year at this time, will they have a lot of tight ends? You know, injury situation with Disley and Greg Olson. Greg Olson probably won't be back. They got Sullivan. That's a little bit of a project. Could be more of that slot tight end guy, and Pitts can play slot and uh, in line. So this this should be a first round tight end. Uh, more receivers. Daz, Daz Newsome of North Carolina is a beast. Uh, you know, this guy. I think maybe like the Brandon Ayuka this year. You know, he. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell by his play style and what he does in the field that he's under six foot. You know, probably goes about five ten, five eleven. Big play guy, another spectacular catch artist and very athletic too. Just reminds me, of, yeah, just somewhat similar to, to Brandon Ayuk. Can't compare them totally, but I guess you kind of can get that idea. Uh, Patriots kind of would love to have one of those guys to kind of pair with Nikhil Harry, perhaps. And again, Vegas odds on Super Bowl. Uh, they still believe in the Patriots. I probably, if I predict this, I probably wouldn't put the Patriots at pick twenty six. But uh, we're not here to predict the season yet. We're going to get to that. So I just want everybody to be clear on that because I always get uh, some smack for that, and it's and I don't deserve it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like Daz Newsome a lot there. Eagles take Dylan Moses. If healthy, this guy can go a lot earlier in this. Missed all of last year. Going to have to knock the rust off, but a really good inside linebacker. Eagles drafted quite a few of those freaky upside linebackers that are probably upside up. Side outside linebackers, um, you know, with the uh, yeah the potential. What I mean by upside there, and they also you know some of them also played sometimes in the slot or safety, so sub package guys. So now they kind of get their inside linebacker, perhaps the, maybe the only need going forward. They would have to receive, uh, you know, r r extend. I should say uh, a guy like Derek Barnett next year, perhaps. Well, I mean that it's too early to talk about that too. So Dylan Moses there. Chuba Hubbard, running back from Oklahoma State. Bucks uh, maybe didn't get the chance on their big time running back. You know, I do like Keyshawn Vaughn, but uh, do they have that true number one? I don't think they do, so they could grab that here. And uh, Hubbard is, uh, he had a fantastic season, you know, up for the Heisman. Really a do it all back. Uh, you know, I think similar to J.K. Dobbins. I think similar to J.K. Dobbins, you know, the way he moves his feet, uh, you know, side to side, that's kind of the thing that stands out. But he's actually going to be faster long speed than J.K. Dobbins. Uh, what maybe stops him from going first round is the fumbling. He did fumble. He put the ball on the ground uh, quite a few times this year. You know, he got to hang on to the ball. But uh, nothing I'm super worried about, but I can be if that continues. So we'll see. But he's a big home run threat. Uh, the combination of, yeah, the size and athleticism, Pretty impressive. Saints take Rondale Moore. You know, Emmanuel Sanders not long term, so this be, you know, maybe the Emmanuel Sanders replacement. Rondale Moore, uh, you know, freak athletes, and um, you know, a guy you can get a screen pass to. You guy can almost like the Jalen Rager, a little different build, but the Jalen Rager maybe of this year you can do similar things in that way with him. Sean Wade, which some of us thought would come out this year, uh, but. Yeah, I, you know, actually, I think it's smart he went back because, you know, I think, uh, well, obviously, Akuda was the best Ohio State corner, and then Damon Arnett stood out the second most. Those guys come out both first-round picks, so I want to see more of Wade. You know, we've seen some of him in the slot, some of him outside, but a good corner. I think he'll be able for, be a first-round pick here. Uh, the Niners can use him outside, maybe opposite of Richard Sherman, but, again, Sherman's probably not – it's not a long-term uh, plan there either, but it can be. Wouldn't rule it out, but – uh, that's a good corner they add. Back-to-back uh, -back Ohio State players. Wyatt Davis goes to the Ravens' offensive lineman. Uh, yeah, maybe the Ravens did add quite a few guards to compete with their current guards to take that Marshall Yonda spot. So maybe it doesn't look like a giant need, but you get better with this spot. And I think Wyatt Davis uh, is is a first-round prospect, a really good pass-blocking guard, and you know he's a solid run blocker as well. You see him open up the uh, the holes for J.K. Dobbins there. So uh, the first-round talent. And then Javon Holland, who's a guy I just really like. You know, he's a DB. You know, we see him play safety in the past. We see him play outside in a lot of inside corner, real physical. 
Uh, you know, really good at attacking the ball, good playmaker as well. So that's another guy to look out for there. And there's a long list of guys that we can talk about being the first round. Um, he's got quite a few quarterbacks. Don't know if all these guys are going to go first round. Just got, just mainly the idea to what players to watch out for. And there's players that won't even be eligible that we have to watch out for. Really looking forward to Sam Howell from North Carolina, quarterback. You know, reminds me of Baker Mayfield a little, you know, a little bit actually. Um, and he uh, he won't be he won't be in the draft till 2020. There's already 2022 prospects you got in mind. You know that's it might be a really way too early to say, but a really good class. Uh, so really, I I can't wait for college football this year. I'm more excited about college football than the NFL, uh, to be honest. So really can't wait. Uh, and we'll have you covered for everything here at the Goat House. Again, we got a whole bunch of rankings, grades. Best picks of the draft coming still, and I want you guys to kind of play along. We'll include those in the videos. If you go to our Twitter, you'll be able to vote uh, for the letter grades for each team's drafts, and maybe we'll have more, some more polls similar to that as well. So that's for every team. So go follow that Twitter's link in the description in the comments. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for all the support. It's been, in, it's been fantastic. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.